But this talk really is about if you have a situation where according to the scrum way of working, you're supposed to do things in a certain order, uh, the guidelines you can try following, but when you actually come to implementing those, you get into problems if you don't have the technical ability. A few years ago, uh, there was a lot of stress in the Scrum community for the need to have technical excellence. That has gone down now. So because we have more frameworks, more certifications and so on, so that, that narrative has somehow gone into the background. But you can't really do some things unless you have sufficient technical ability. Uh, it, and if you have it, it adds to your ability or your agility, let's say. It adds to your agility. So we are just trying to demonstrate one side of it. Okay? So we start with the user story. Uh, we quickly hope you can participate and help me break down that user story. And then we can prioritize it. And then we try to deliver, so we come from big user story to a bunch of smaller ones, but really the value comes when the entire thing is done. You can still deliver different smaller stories in different sprints or same sprint, but you've got to bring all that together at some point. And that's where the difficulties start emerging. So on paper it looks like, yeah, you can break it down, it's, uh, but when you try to put them together, it doesn't come beautifully together. Uh, what can you do about it? Well, you need to have those technical skills. And which technical skill and what you need to understand, that's what Nirmal will be explaining. All right? With me so far? Excellent. Here's your last chance to escape from the room. No. Uh, I've asked the guards to bolt the doors and spear anyone who runs out. Of course. Uh, <laughs> No worries. You've, all you have to do is put an intelligent face and pretend you're understanding it and we'll forgive you. I think others have done that before. Oh, have they? <laughs> oh, have they? All right. Okay, anyway. Um, so, architectures, architectural framework, enabling business, nice buzzwords there. They're all buzzwords. You must learn them, add them to your CV, and it'll help you. Right, so, so we got a, head a headache of a user story and we are going to tell the story of how to deal with this. This is not exactly the user story that was dealt with by Nirmalaya, but we have changed some of the things so that the domain is easier to understand. So it is fictitious, but the solution was actually really implemented in a slightly different setting. Yeah. Okay. So I'll give you the background in a minute. We have problems with user stories. That's the same old thing. If you have attended multiple conferences, you heard this, you've seen this movie before, but well, you can see it one more time. How do we split the user story and how do we bring all this together? So this seems a bit strange that bringing them together could be a problem and we'll see why. And by means of aka based framework, it has got some capabilities or some is that correct? Capabilities is the right word? Okay. Uh, by which you can solve some problems. And uh, then we end with some comments on testing. So how much time do we have? I think now 25 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. No worries. What you can understand in an hour, you can understand in 20 minutes. Okay, the story is something like this. Uh, as a travel agent, I'd like to book an entire business trip for basically so that busy, a busy executive can get a single voucher which covers the flights, the hotels, possibly the taxi, I mean the airport pickups or the airport transfers as well. But it's all, so the travel agent would be working for maybe many corporate clients, but this corporate client has a travel desk uh, and they give these requests to the travel agent or maybe the travel desk does it, but basically it's their business trips and the entire thing comes as one voucher, not separate vouchers. So, and that is a USP, one shot booking and a single voucher. Otherwise, this thing has been done many times before. So this is a sep Now, how can we break this user story down? Any ideas? Uh, 
Okay. So scope wise, it is usually one trip. Let's just discuss one trip. So maybe a two day trip. So what do you have to book? Flight, taxi, okay, trans and hotel. Okay, can we come up very quickly with a little more, a few more complications that might come up in a scenario like this? No. While booking, you're not worried about flight getting delayed. That's future. Uh, that's a good one, but you are running about seven slides ahead of me. So, the currency. Currency. Okay, in interesting. Yeah, if you are doing some international travel and so on. Okay, currency. Availability. Okay. Uh, okay, and one more. I'll uh, let's say flights could be with partner airlines. So onward flight could be one airline and if this is for a given airline uh, and then on the way back maybe you like KLM and Northwest or something like that. So you may have partner airline. Okay. Okay. So there, there are a bunch of things here. Okay. You have flights, taxis, hotels and within <coughs> for hotel it may be a different currency. Flight may be a different currency, you may, but finally, when you make one booking, you're paying with one currency, but and so on. So these are the some of the complications. For now, let's just live with these. We don't need more complications at the moment. How would you prioritize these? Think like a product owner who has some idea of the technical. And by the way, someone brought up this. Okay, I think you were. So you said things like network failures. We'll come to that in a second. But but if you look at network failures, this is not a this is not a functional problem, so to speak. It affects functionality if it happens, but otherwise it's not a functional issue. So if you just look at the functional issues in terms of value, how would you pick this up? Anyone else? Any other? No, 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 here you're going to implement this. So now you've broken this big story down into smaller stories. So the smaller story is how are we going to? So I'm not writing the whole story for each one. I'm too lazy to do that. So, so I'm talking about that. Implementation we'll just discuss in a minute. I mean, that's the rest of the talk, yes. So, so priority looks like this. Then maybe hotel and then we'll worry about currency after hotel, uh, partner will be later. This could be rough priority, right? Okay. And we try to fix it one by one. What happened? Oh, we need the clicker, is it? No. No, 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 one second. Why is the simple, this not working? It's a PDF. That's a PDF. It's not a PDF. Yeah, so? Because you don't know. Okay, we have further technical hitches. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. No, it has come through. Keep it this way, I think. You can go ahead. Okay, so we have done, we have done one and two. Okay, all right. So another thing is, by the way, the partner airline, something I said, this could have been discovered later. You have this entire story and you could have discovered the need to 
deal with a partner airline or really down the line because at the moment in the product backlog as you develop this the i mean as you groom the user story you didn't think of everything and you figure this out later so that couldn't happen so as you do these in sprints what happens you could do this and then you could do this bit and then you could do this bit and all this is there till you think of network failures and so on so what do you need to implement all of these what would the application look like how do you think this will work out what do you think are the parts on the implementation side and unless everything comes together this product doesn't have a what some people call an mvp or a meaningful mvp it doesn't have because there are a lot of other people who book flights or a hotel or so on the usp is a quick business booking one single voucher that is the thing so until it comes together it is it's not going to do much for you so technically how does the architecture look like can someone guide me through this or do you think we should just do it because there are 12 minutes left yeah i think so i think we should do that so the issue is you may have a front end you could be communicating to some kind of server and the server needs to deal with this user story but do you think given what we have seen in the breakdown a single server would be able to handle all these different aspects of hotel booking of airport transfers of currency and the flights uh sorry we may have to create separate surface so basically yeah mm. okay you have to stop me if i'm no yeah so then you have this for i don't know consolidation well it depends on the level of abstraction you are prepared to deal with and so we don't even have to figure all that now yeah ah, so we may we may not actually implement all this we just talking about what is the problem so the problem is was it easy to split the user stories yes but will it make a difference unless everything comes together doesn't look like but when it comes together at that time if you think of network issues what do you hit that is the issue so now what happens is this needs to make a call to the flights make a call to the currency guys maybe i mean for an exchange some kind of service for the hotels etc this is the issue well for each story your flow through would be front end consolidation this is one story this is one story this is one story but when you bring all this together it's actually all of this so please this is a good point when people talk about vertical slice we think about just layers but vertical slice really mean is not about waving your hands this way it is really about are you touching all the systems and subsystems that are required so in this case for the mvp at least the vertical slice is actually all the way uh i mean through all of this so that is where it is okay please note we have not even talked about availability in this yeah that's fine so okay this is going back a bit but when we when we try to implement a business scenario the developers and the architects need to model it as a part at least in their heads if not formally but they need to model it and they need to think of how this gets done as bits and pieces code and data in computers in the, in the computer system so alan k who was the creator of creator of small talk okay 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 and 
as idea. So anyway, so he bas basically in this here, he is saying that you need to really have your idea of object oriented FLIR and you need to think of business entities in terms of objects and messages. So now we have a, your now application, the situation we are in is a stage set for the actors and but actors here is referring to Akka and things around it. So I, at this moment I will hand over the <laughs> mic to Nirma. You are you're on, okay. Be, be here. Okay. Um, I have five minutes to finish, uh, so quickly go through this. Um, don't have to really understand everything, but I'm sure the left hand side code base, that code snippet all of you, uh, you know, can relate to. So this is a standard code. What actually happens is that in such a case, your whole application is one JVM, I'm talking about Java applications, one process. This is what most of the developers are used to. Uh, of course, this can happen that on the same machine I can have two JVMs in which case the call when A calls B, the B is actually not co-located in the same JVM. It can be another JVM. You guys must be running um, multiple JVMs in the same machine. It becomes, in our case, it becomes even more interesting when it is a remote machine itself. Okay. So this is where your distributedness comes in. And the first uh, question that lurks is what he mentioned is what if the network is unavailable? So the point we are trying to make here is that if there is a distributed application you are trying to build um, using microservices, that's you know, that buzzword of today's, the first thing you have to understand is that there is no guarantee, there is absolutely no guarantee that your call is going to succeed. If you call a method on an object, it may never succeed, which means that your business case has to be able to deal with it. So in, 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 a, in a case like this, if if you make a call to a service to book a ticket for you and it just simply doesn't work because the network is unavailable, then your use case has to accommodate that possibility, which is usually not the case. So your product management or your, you know, the business guy, whosoever it is, has to understand the fact that if it is a distributed application, then the result may have to be different. So one of the cases could be that, you know, uh, I could not book a cab, I could not book a hotel, but I could book a flight for you. Is that an acceptable use case? If so, then your final um, voucher that goes to, the, goes to the customer has to be only hotel booking done, sorry, air ticket booking done, hotel not done, taxi not done. Is that an acceptable use case for the user? If so, then you can go ahead. But the point I'm making is that if, you're, if your technical team decides to go the microservice way, you have to understand that call may fail anytime, okay? No guarantee. So this is a very famous quote. Uh, just take 30 seconds to read what he's saying. He's saying that you may be having many computers across AWS instances and all that. One of them is some just simply fail. And you have no idea which computer is failing in the network hops. And if that is the case, then just throwing an exception and putting that back on the browser is not the solution that your user wants to see. So the application has to handle that situation and create a temporary acceptable use case. Okay. This is the reality of microservices. And maybe do something to recover the functional situation by an asynchronous message later on. Okay, so these are these are the rules. You can read about this in the net, but the only the <coughs> the marked ones are important for you. Whenever you have a distributed system, your technical team has decided to go the distributed way. Uh, we are, are talking rules. about distribution of the application, not agile distribution. Yeah, it's application distribution. Please understand that these fallacies are all true. Okay, so network is reliable, not true. Latency is zero. This is a very uh, common case amongst uh, users. How much time does it take for the response to come back? We don't usually consider that. And JUnit never proves. JUnit is a co-local tool to tell, to tell you if a method is called, is a response going to come back? No temporal aspect there. It may take 30 seconds. It may take one second. It may take half a millisecond. It doesn't matter. It depends on the real life situation. Okay. 
So, I will just quickly go through it for the, the so there is this new uh, back end technology that we work with it is called the uh, ACA system is based upon a concept called actor. I encourage that you read a bit about it. Actor systems are very, very well placed to implement things like this including the fact that network calls may fail and then the framework is such that you cannot leave that to chance. You actually have to consider and code for the case where the call has failed and the response has not come back to you which is not the case in J2E yeah, by the way for that matter spring also ok any distributed application. Um, well this is uh, I can quickly go through this. Um, now we can take over and tell them what happens if there is a actor system like this. So actor 1, actor 2 uh, can be each of this. I think is the next slide or? Yeah. Ok yeah, so, so basically you know. Forget uh, the technicality so just roughly the application behavior. Is, is this a good math? I mean that is for a different case that is not for this case. But the equivalent in our case is something like that where, so would each of these be an actors? And each of them would be a separate service? Yes, we can think of it that way, yeah. Uh, now what, what I want to bring together is if you if your technical team was good and they knew about this then what they should do as part of talking to the product owner and saying is that, uh, I mean they would know this because they are using Akka, uh, they would say that okay we can split this user story but this really has to come together at the end. So this, you know the definition of done is now different for different user stories. The, all the sub stories have a different definition of done and together when they all come together they have a different definition of done where we are also able to handle uh, these network failures and the asynchronous behavior of. Next thing is if they are really innovative you can get ideas like okay let it first be an e-voucher so you can actually say things like uh, flight is confirmed, hotel is tentative because it did not get booked actually and taxi is confirmed and we will refresh or we will send you messages maybe in the next 10 minutes to confirm. So that is one option. I think in the gaming uh, case which we actually did, we did something of this sort, right. So that is a option that is now there for the product owner. So what Nirmala said earlier is, is it acceptable saying that these are not booked but you can do maybe better than that by just saying that okay these are booked, this is tentative and we will confirm or otherwise a little later and the, the this whole uh, framework will take care of it. it you can code it in such a way quite easily so that it takes care of it. Okay. Um, is there any other thing that I am missing no. or we have okay so we have maybe glossed over a couple of details around this but that may be okay. Uh, we have 15 seconds left so that is not bad timing. Uh, so a lot of companies are using it for so these are sort of companies that are using this uh, frameworks of this sort actor and those are the types of applications where they have been used. Oh. It's just a plus So, slide. okay. <laughs> and so Nirmala here, he has worked on a huge number of things, a variety. Uh, and please note, he does not say things like I am a J2E architect he laughs at that description. So G2E architect is not an architect. So uh, with the kind of things he has done uh, basically gives him a really wide appreciation of what technology can do and, uh, and he has seen a lot of new wine and uh, old wine and new bottle and so on and so forth. So that is about him. Anything you would like to add? No. Okay then questions please. Five seconds for a question. Five seconds for questions. Okay, <laughs> that that's I think that's really out of time. so. It's about uh, five years old. Yeah. So the point of this, I think, maybe, is uh, is that the if a serv because Aka allows the service not to respond or have you have to when you call an actor, it may not come back but you have to have a way of dealing with it. So you could use that to code 
a minimum viable product that doesn't have all the elements. And your, the rest of the supervisory code would say, oh, I mean, it couldn't distinguish between there's no money exchange available currently because the server is down, or there's no money exchange available currently because we haven't implemented it yet. Is that true? That is correct. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, uh, we can always have mock actors without, with hardly any coding effort to still create a semblance of the whole application, in which case, uh, let's say the hotel booking is always a default value, which will always also be the default value if the network fails once it is deployed. There's a thing in <clears throat> Lean Startup called a concierge MVP. Mm -hmm. and, and the meaning behind that is that a human being does the work. So if you allow for sufficient time delay between the request for the hotel reservation and the response that says the hotel is available, you could implement the hotel reservation part by just sending an email to your attendant and they could do the booking and send the material send back. Send an SMS back to you. Yeah, that's why, that's what that means. Concierge MVP means uh, we just want to test whether the market will respond to the service we provide and we're willing to pay a person hourly wage, which of course is ridiculous for scaling, but for the initial part where you're just trying to find out if there's a market at all, you're willing to pay hun hun tens of thousands of rupees <laughs> for human beings to do this work. And then you say, oh, it looks like people will pay for this service. Maybe we should implement it. Okay. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. But I think the uh, I think you brought a different dimension to this. What I was getting at is it looks so easy to break down the user stories and you think that oh we just break down all we implement one by one and it'll all come together. If you don't have the technical capability and some of the things that Akka does, you may find a problem at the end of it. And then you'll say, I'm almost done. And you know this is very dangerous. So that's that's one of the things. Uh, imagine this to be a Java application, effectively. So if I have an AWS instance, I can simply just run a Java application, but it will run using actors, not in the traditional J2E. Yeah, I mean, most of the applications that we have built so far are all on AWS, multiples of them. Yeah. In fact, uh, it's quite easy. Let's say I just take his example, and many of you may relate to this, is that let's say there's a human being. He receives an email, he does a booking, and he seems to just replies to the email saying, you know, your passenger ID is this, and blah, 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 blah. It's extremely easy to create an email recipient actor, and it will run asynchronously. So the moment he sends an email, you don't need a human being on the receiving side, and the email will be received, and it will be worked upon in the usual way. So that asynchronousness is built in, as well as the concurrence, concurrency. And there are other technical details that we are not going into. For example, Actor is extremely well placed for today's hardware, which is characterized by the fact that you do not have in today's machines faster CPUs anymore. What you have is moderate, moderate C, uh, speed CPUs, number of them having cores. So if you are having your machine, which is having multi-core machines, in order to really make them work to pay for the dollars, you have to go for frameworks like Actor. Okay, so just by having faster machines, world is not going to go any faster. You have to write code in such a way which makes the most use of your multiple cores. If we could go into the deta details, technical details, we could have gone to that level. So I encourage you to read about it and consider implementation if you want. So, so the other very quick comment is: suppose the team is very good with using actors and implementing all this, then they would they would just go by more or less this you, sequence of user stories. If they were less confident and they only heard Nirmalaya say this, so they know it can be done, but they haven't done it themselves, then they would probably create a spike and put it here. 
say, okay, let's try this one out. Flights plus taxis, maybe put it here. Have a spike on how to do it. They could do that. That's just to bring the spike angle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. If you have a question, we can still take it. Otherwise, we break for tea.